Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and start with the kimchi. First things first, we need to cut up all the vegetables and uh, soak them overnight in salt water. It's kind of similar to the sauerkraut, different process though. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and cut up the Napa cabbage along with a daikon radish, it's large. I'm gonna use about a half of that. Um, we're going to use a cucumber. Uh, kimchi normally has carrots in it, but we don't eat carrots that much. And a, a couple onions. And I'm going to go ahead and get that uh, chopped up and put in. And whenever we're ready to put everything together, we'll be right back. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and add one cup of salt to this. And then let it sit overnight. You want it to, to um, marinate in that salty water. Uh, for ideally you want to do it for 24 hours a couple hours will do um, if you're in a pinch so we'll go ahead and get this done if I don't break everything now you are not going to eat the salt that I'm putting in here. This is not going to be part of it. This is just to prepare the vegetables for the ferment. Uh, we are going to be draining this once it is uh, done salting. We're going to go ahead and just stir everything up. Now the pieces, remember kimchi was meant to be eaten with chopsticks. So you want the pieces to be pretty thick. Um, not, you know, like the cucumbers, you know, normal eating size. Onions, same size, the best you can. Radish. Let me find a radish here. Pretty thick, but still enough to be able to grab with with chopsticks. And we'll let that sit overnight. Now that this has been soaking for 24 hours, what we're going to we're going to go ahead and do is drain this. but don't rinse it. Just try to get as much of the water off as possible. Now, this is going to be a kind of a small batch. I think only I'm going to need only two quart jars for this. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to add your uh, the ingredients. Now, some people use a kind of like a paste using uh, rice flour. You know, you boil the rice flour with the water. I'm not going to do that. It just adds way too much starch to this. Um, this actually comes out just fine. Now it's going to be two tablespoons of ginger. Since this, uh, the original recipe calls for one cup of crushed uh, garlic, I am actually going to go ahead and do half a cup only because it's the I'm only doing one head of cabbage instead of uh, and one small head of Napa cabbage. Uh, the original recipe asked for two. Two large ones, by the way. Okay, and... One 
one quarter cup of fish sauce. One quarter cup of our homemade soy sauce. Remember, see how dark it is? That's what you're going to press in about a year. One cup of Korean red pepper powder. This is very unique. Uh, make sure you get the Korean red flakes. Now it's asking for one quarter cup of sugar. I don't have any sugar. I really don't keep it too, you know, I don't keep a lot of it in here, but I am going to use honey. Gives it a little bit of a sweetened flavor. And adds uh, sucralose for the bacteria to eat. And then we're going to mix those all up. If you have to, use your hands. If you want to make this vegan, omit the fish sauce and just use double the soy sauce. Now this ferment is going to be just like the pickles, it's going to be about, in the summertime it's three to five days, and uh, since it's winter time and it's still cold, I'm guessing seven to nine days, like just like the dill pickles. It's not going to be a long ferment. Traditionally this is uh, fermented whole. You know, you have the, they, they cut the, um, the, the cabbage, and, or, and, and, or not, they prepare the cabbage to the point to where the um, they use the whole thing. This is quicker because it has less surface tension to in, to penetrate. And you basically want to put it in your jars. Don't worry about making a mess. Oh, and don't forget your crop pounder. Be back in a minute. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and tamp this down, just like the kraut. And basically you're processing it just like the kraut. You don't want any air bubbles. Now, I'm not making this hot. You notice I did not put any chilies. We don't like hot.
We're going to need one more jar. Okay, same deal. Wipe them off. Put the weights on. And put the fermenting lids on. Now, just like uh, with the uh, kraut, you want to keep the outer la leaves because you should still want that anaerobic environment. If you have to, add some liquid. Because it will, it, these will also um, come up the top just like the crop did.
and clean up and just wait. Make sure you have this under a bowl or over a bowl or something um, to be able to catch the liquid as it um, bubbles. And we wait. Okay, now that it has been a week after we've finished up the kimchi, it is done. Uh, we've actually uh, shared some with neighbors. Uh, look how red that is. I'm going to take these the fermenting lids off and put them in the refrigerator. We're actually going to have some with dinner. Nice and red and a lot better than the stuff that you get in the store. Fresh is always best. Now we're going to go ahead and put these away. And I want to show you what we I found over at Walmart. These are red bell peppers. They're about the size of my head. I want to make sausage to stuff these with and to um, have some for dinner. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, freeze some for later meals. And then we'll have some kimchi along with some green uh, canned green beans. Now, disclaimer. Grandpa Want Rebel wants to cut up the meat and grind it. So we're gonna go ahead and film a little bit of that. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to make a sage and ginger type sausage, which we have actually fallen in love with. All right, see you in a few. Go ahead. Now, just to let you know, it is cheaper to make your own ground pork than it is to actually buy the ground pork. This was $1.68 a pound. I do believe ground pork is $3.69 a pound right now. And um, beef is probably twice as much. So this was the best option for our budget, but budget accordingly. And if you want to, you can actually yell at Grandpa Rebel for cutting through plastic. <laughs> I give you permission. With my good knives. We're gonna cut these in strips and then we're gonna go ahead and get the grinder out. We will be back. I don't get it. Don't stuff it too much. And a little bit faster. Okay. 
let it empty at first and then stuff. See, you're packing it too fast. No, I'm not packing. I'm letting it cool. Definitely different from frozen, isn't it? Yes. That's more dense than the meat. So you give it a little bit. And if we don't break the mixer, we will be right back. Now that we have all that, that's 10 pounds of ground pork, we're going to go ahead and put in, it's supposed to be 10 tablespoons of uh, ground ginger. I'm using fresh, so I'm using a little bit less. And I'm going to use my hands to mix this because this is a big bowl. Okay, it's asking for for a five pound batch. It wants three tablespoons. Don't skip on this step. Um, you are we're going to do a whole six tablespoons. Six. I got this at the dollar store and I keep refilling filling it so it's not kosher salt, it's just a jar I use. Two tablespoons of pepper. Seems like a lot, but it's not. Now it's calling for five tablespoons of sage per, or actually one tablespoon of sage per um, pound. I don't have that much sage. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump the rest of what I have and add some uh, crushed basil that I grew from the garden. Uh, it's a mixture of uh, sweet basil and purple basil, which will give it a nice kind of sweet peppery taste. And then here we go with garlic. Two, three, I'm putting four tablespoons in here. It's calling for half of this. We want garlic. And that's it. We're going to mix this up. Now, traditionally, after we mix it up, you want to put it in like a Ziploc bag or something like a gallon Ziploc bag, lay it flat, 
leave it in the refrigerator overnight to let all the um, flavors marinate. I'm not going to go ahead and do that uh, because we're going to go ahead and stuff the peppers and then freeze them. And then when it, they'll go ahead and whenever you thaw them out, they'll go ahead and marinate themselves. Um, but I do have some that, have, that has already been sitting in the refrigerator, marinating for, I think, four days now that I need to do something with. So I'm going to use some of that and then let this the rest of this marinate in the refrigerator. Now, typically, I would do this in the stand mixer. This is a lot. And this is not going to fit in that stand mixer. Even if I do this in batches, it's going to take a while. Mm, I can already smell the garlic and the ginger. Now, typically, this is a breakfast sausage, but it has our American uh, breakfast sausage typically has like brown sugar in it. Um, but this is apparently more of a European style breakfast sausage, which I have no problems eating for dinner. I don't know how many times I've had pancakes for for dinner or French toast, scrambled eggs. There's absolutely nothing wrong with breakfast for dinner. Make sure you get all everything mixed up. You don't want lumps of garlic or ginger in the middle of your sausage unless you like that oh you can kind of get a little bit of an upper workout upper body workout with this don't you but if you see how it's starting to become gummy that's kind of what you want <laughs> anyway, so what we want to do, clean up and get the pe bell peppers prepared. I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands, let that rest for a little bit, and we'll go ahead and empty out those bell peppers. All right, now that, that this is sitting to the side, we're going to go ahead and um, hollow up the bell peppers. It's pretty easy. All I have to do is cut the top. Pull it out. There it goes. And there's a little bit of membrane left in there that you kind of want to try to scrape out. And get out the rest of the seeds. That's how you hollow out a bell pepper. Any bad spots that you see, if you can get them out, go for it. But if, if not, you may need to like cut through the pepper, which is... Uh, if, if that happens, go ahead and just cut the pepper up and put it in a Ziploc bag, put it in the freezer for other things.
Sorry about that, forgot a garbage bowl. One thing about a bell pepper, I may be getting this backwards, but I do believe four is male, male pepper, and three, one, two, three, is female. I might be, yeah, I may have those switched, but it's uh, good to see what type of seeds you can get out of this. Because you can actually take these seeds, dry them out a little bit, and uh, plant them. And you will get you will get peppers. You may not get these nice gorgeous bell peppers, but you will get peppers. And this is how you save seeds from your food that you buy in the store. And you can grow bell peppers in pots. In fact, I've got a poblano pepper that I have put on the sidelines inside a pot. I grew it yet last year. And got a little itty bitty pepper, bell, poblano peppers out of them. Brought it in and I'm over wintering it. Now, next year I'm gonna put it in the ground. I'll let it flourish. And hopefully we get lots and lots of Clubano peppers. Because those things are, things are fabulous for stuffing too. Okay, now we have one of each. I'm going to use these for dinner. I'm going to continue on with these. And we'll be back. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and finish up the stuffing. Now that we have everything nice and hollowed out, I've chopped up a whole bunch of shallots. We're going to go ahead and add that to this. We're going to add about half a pound of mozzarella cheese. Maybe a little bit more. Because, you know, stuffed peppers have to have cheese. Mozzarella melts a little bit better than, say, cheddar, but you can use anything you want. And for the binder, now, a lot of people use either rice or breadcrumbs. Um, I'm actually going to use almond meal, about two cups worth for this. It'll help soak up some of the grease and make it a little bit more moist. And the great value um, almond meal at Walmart actually is a drier um, type of almond meal and it'll soak up the moisture a little bit better. So here we go with the hands again. There we go. So now that that is all nice and mixed up, go ahead and start stuffing 
the bell peppers. Like I said, I'm making dinner. Any leftovers for this, you can either can, um, pressure can for meat times, or freeze for meatloaf if you find more bell peppers, things of that nature. Just use them. You can stuff like jalapenos and stuff with this. Got one that's tearing. Go ahead and put that back in. And just wash, rinse, and repeat. If you're making these some of these right away go ahead and turn on preheat 350 Hey, hon. Yes? I think we could have gotten um, away with about half of this. Okay. I did not enter. I thought these would have, would hold about a pound. Uh -huh. No. No, about half a pound each. So a lot of meat. more meat for meatballs 
meatloaf. If I ever find these on sale again, I'll have it already pre-mixed. Mm -hmm. I think I can get three meatloafs out of what is left over. Okay. Like he's crying. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're you 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 you're in such turmoil. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I can help you get rid of the meatloaf. So let's go ahead and bag this up. I'm thinking two, two meatloaves, maybe. Three meatloaves. I want to jump in. Three. Excuse me. All right. Now that the oven is preheated, we're going to go ahead and cover this up. Put a little bit of moisture at the bottom so we don't want anything to burn. Just a little bit. Kind of. You want to cover the as best as you can. Now that that's cooking, hour, I'm going to give it an hour. We have our leftover meatloaf. Then we're going to go ahead and 
um, bag up the bell peppers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine meals. Now the peppers were not on sale. Uh, I do believe I paid ten dollars for the bell peppers. 10, 13, uh, about 13 ish for the bell peppers, and then another 13 for the pork. And with everything else, see that's 26. So under $30 for nine meals. Not too bad in this economy. Um, if you can find the bell peppers on sale, then that would be better. Or if you can grow them yourself, that would be even better. Okay, and there we have it. We have our stuffed bell pepper, kimchi, and some green beans with squash that I canned earlier this year. And hopefully, we'll start cleaning up the yard and getting the garden going as soon as it gets warmer. <laughs>